Okay, great. Thank you so much. And I'm so delighted to be having the opportunity to have this session because it's two Latinas in venture capital. And how often do you see that? Not often enough. Now we're crossing borders too, because we have a Latina with experience, substantial experience from Latin America. And uh, I'll tell you more about her background, but this uh, summer, a couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to go visit Mexico for business. And it is booming because there's been a lot of political uh, international trade changes. All of them have been favorable to Mexico. And you can see it in the everyday economy there. Uh, you can see it in the infrastructure there. Uh, you can see that there is wealth accumulating there in a much broader way. And so that has been uh, a real eye opener. And it is, it is why I think this conversation with Adriana Tortojada is so relevant right now because the market has never been stronger, I don't think, for Mexico than it is now. But I want to say a little bit about you before you. Um, before we, um, we begin. And uh, what is so interesting about Adriana is that she started doing venture capital and private equity and other kinds of alternative investments on behalf of one of the large Mexican funds. I think it's called Fondo de Fondo. Correct. And she's been doing it for like, what, 20 years? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> so she really precedes us in terms of experience. But the other uh, amazing opportunity that she had and that I think is so valuable is that she was in the driver's seat in terms of making allocations for these investments. Because it's one thing to study the topic and think about it. It's another thing to invest other people's funds with the expectation of returns. Let me just tell you, as a uh, general partner myself, the responsibility that one feels, ooh, it's, it's different. And uh, she had the opportunity to do it in a very, very mega way. She can tell us the numbers later. But Adriana has also been a Kaufman Fellow. She has an MBA from UC Berkeley, so one of the UC, one of the most prestigious, all of them are, uh, UC uh, universities. Uh, and the um, uh, uh, opportunity that I was referring to was when she was the director of uh, venture capital, mezzanine, and impact funds at the Fondo de Fondos de Mexico. And I'm going to stop there and start the conversation with you and whatever you want to add to your bio that I might have left out. We are all extremely interested in your background. Thank you very much, Abella. Thank you, all of you. It's been a pleasure to meet you, you know, a couple of months ago. And I really admire what you're achieving here and all the talented people that you're gathering to really transform the opportunities and rebrand what the Latinos can do across the world. So, so congratulations. And yeah, I've been, you know, quite pioneer being the first female Mexican investor in the venture capital industry. Without can, knowing. Can you repeat that? <laughs> the first Mexican, Mexican female, female investor, investor in venture capital. Venture capital. I start my career. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Without knowing exactly what I was doing. You know, I was, uh, I just took the challenge like every female leader. I'm the youngest of three older brothers. So can you imagine? I, you know, I was teached to be resilient since pretty early stages in my life. And I never felt different. And I need to tell me yeah, to confess, I was one of the guys. Actually, Jose Luis just introduced me like, this is my brother. And like, okay, I'm your sister, but yeah, you can tell me brother. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. But I, I was so used to be the only female in the room. And it was amazing when I started to create the venture capital industry in Mexico, it was 2003. 
<laughs> so imagine no one was linking, you know, innovation, technology, deep science and technology, entrepreneurial world with Mexican brand back into the early 2000s. So I was a little bit naive to really, you know, <laughs> accept the challenge and create the first deep tech fund in Mexico. Managing, you know, public resources to link with the Angel Investors Network and to really, you know, boost the science and technology innovators in our country. By the way, we graduate more engineers than U.S. back then. And nobody knew that. So I did my research. I said, okay, Mexico in, has more than 27 of innovation and research centers, you know, spouse, you know, sponsored by the government. We are the second largest economy in the region the fifth in the world in 2050. And I said, this is a huge opportunity, huge demographic bonus for biodiversity country. They said, we have a huge opportunity to innovate and launch, you know, of course, businesses not only in our region, because we're, we're the second largest economy in the Latin America, but also really connected with more than 26 countries across the globe. And of course, the major, you know, partner with US and Canada. So I said, it's a great opportunity to launch a venture capital firm, you know, to support the, the one million first run for entrepreneurs. Mm. And guess what? Nobody was really worried about to take their role with the deep responsibility. Mm. So never the science of technology people wanted to launch companies. No, the wealthy people was trying to do angel investment just for fun. They was trying to look for majorities, ownership. You know, that we're not understanding the role and how key is that everyone understand what role is playing and play it through full to the next stage. So I have to, you know, get back and say, okay, we need to get back to schools and train how to do a pitch competitions, business plan competition. We need to bring, you know, angel investors network and frameworks and legal firmers to really convince everyone that a minority is right. <laughs> You know, you can add a lot of value being a minority investor in a company. We need to convince that we need to allocate money in a diverse managers that they can really, you know, understand and look for the diverse founders. And that's why we inspire a huge movement, not only in Mexico and the rest of development banks across the major you know, economies in Latin America to really launch the fund of funds. Because even the fund of fund of Mexico back in 2004, was not investing in first-time fund for Stanford manager. So who is going to invest in technology? So we support more than 45 new, you know, VCs, and that is linked to another 150, and that is linked to what I did at the National Entrepreneurship Institute for the fund of funds that I promote impact investment because nobody was measuring the impact. And I was been trying to connect, you know, what is being to be an allocator, but what is being to be a manager. And what it has to be to be an intrapreneur in our organizations. So that's what I become in this next chapter of my life in a busy printer. <laughs> wow. Well, it's it's just it's just awesome. And then you're so young, and then you're starting a whole new phase. In Spanish, now. we say come años. <laughs> <laughs> come años. Interesante. Um, and and we're coming now to where you've left the public sector in Mexico. And now, in a way, though, it's an extension of what you were doing, except now it's for a uh, large but very important Mexican family. And then it's, I think it, it coalesces yep. all of what you learned now to build what's called uh, 1200 VC. And, and let me tell you something, before to join the, and really jump to become a busy printer, I detox myself of the public-private sector, and I spent four years in the global bank at Grupo Santander, mm. leading all the global entrepreneurship business unit. So when I spend my time between, you know, planes and different time zones and different, like, 15 different geographies, it was our food spring. I understood that independently, if it's underdeveloped or developed economy, the challenges for uh, emerging fund managers and early stage founders are exactly the same. Mm. Access to talent, <laughs> you know, clients and market, and of course, financing. Mm. So after being there and say, it's the same in Germany than in the, you know, the emerging groups in the development 
world as well. Look at us, the minorities here in US, right? Mm -hmm. So I understood and I and I think the the opportunity knock at my door. One of the largest family offices in Mexico was looking for someone that managed their venture capital arm with the same vision and purpose that I was leading in the past. You know, with these hybrid investment thesis, investing into fund managers, early stages that can be the magnet for the most promising founders. And then, of course, when you have the opportunity to review and create a trust and take a look on the mega trends and the window of opportunities in those underlying portfolios, invest directly in more Series A, Series B. So that was actually my entire you know, career. So when they pitch me and I say, why don't you come and help us to do that? And I say, oh, my God, I think I'm ready to jump and say this is what is needed. It's a huge opportunity to you know, build a larger gap and connect what is happening in Latin America with the talent, but of course develop it in US. So I think that is a great opportunity that all of us can definitely capture value and create great returns and rebrand the attributes of our community as well. Yeah, globally. you're so right. And you know, I would say that one of the things that we notice here at Angeles Investors is that so many of our startups rely on services from Latin America, mm -hmm. principally Mexico, but not exclusively, a lot throughout the rest of Latin America. And this has been going on from the beginning. I mean, talk about uh, Canela. Canela, uh, the last report I saw has more employees in Mexico than it does in the United States. And from the beginning, uh, the founder there said, oh no, I can get great content for better value out of Mexico. So, and all, all, all the entrepreneurs that we invest in look very carefully at other markets for opportunities. So we are, you know, uh, bridging uh, the, the multiple economies of Latin America, frankly, because we're, we're united in our ability to communicate there easier and we're, you know, technically connected regionally. Absolutely. And that's why we launched 1200 BZ, like an investment platform, like a solution. It's not only because it's hard, you know, getting away of uh, stereotypes. So we are trying to build a different initiative that can really capture more value for everyone. Because even the fund managers are all the time struggling for fundraise. Of course, the founders as well. So we can understand both both sides of the story, but also the wealthy people. This is strongly we're to allocate money mm -hmm. to build trust and you know leapfrog to the future and really get involved with the technologies that are solving our more painful you know challenges right now with technology. Mm. So 1200 BC is a sense of time when your clock turns into 12 zero, zero hours, for us it's the gateway for the future, a new way to looking forward to, you know, to get advance of what is happening. So for that, we are focusing on create a hybrid investment strategy, which is that we allocate money into fund managers in early stages, very specialized, even for geography or a particular sector in the entire America. And of course, when those underlying portfolios start to scale, we also allocate money into Series A, Series B of those companies directly. So why we are investing across Latin America, of course, it's 70% US and 30% Latin America because we want to build a bridge, but also because we are aware that we can invest in the entire innovation spectrum. We can invest in deep tech in US, which is an emerging sector, as you also have exposure in your portfolio, but also in tech-based, tech enables companies that are really given a lot of solutions that can be scalable globally. So our target size is 100 million, and we are happy to engage with any one of you, and of course, with the entire network that Angel's investor is creating. Thank you so much. And, you know, as somebody that, you know, is building a portfolio of this size, you already are uh, deploying but you also have the prior experience at um, uh, the university and the one at Fondo de Fondos. How do you express the v the trend uh, generally in VC firms today? What what are some of the defining uh, trends that you're seeing in our industry? I think it's a great opportunity. You can 
we can take a look in how the, our economies are growing at different speed. So if you take a look in the opportunities, even inside U.S., for all the different models that are being created with deep tech technology, cloud computing, AI, but that can definitely be proven here, but they need a lab. So Latin America for us is an underset market. We, don't have, we have a huge demographic bonus, so we are trying to connect the dots. And for example, we were talking about with Alex early this morning about his wearable. And I said, where are you manufacturing? He said, I'm trying to move my manufacturing and all my line to Mexico. I said, I'm the one that can make the introductions to you instead of being in China and become more competitive and more productive. I'm trying to connect the dots also with the opportunities. The most talented engineers in cybersecurity are emerging from Argentina right now. Yeah. They have a space company, right? And so that kind of connections is for me the mega trends that are leapfrog and capture more value and connecting the Latina community in this underdeveloped and developed economy. So we have a huge and quite unique opportunity to rebrand, you know, what we are capable to achieve and the higher returns and the positive social and sustainable impact that we can create to invest in these innovation trends. Wow. Well, you know, one of the things uh, in terms of the audience here, there are always entrepreneurs. We've heard a couple of them give us updates on their uh, companies. And there are also fundraisers. And as you know, uh, Angeles Investors has launched a fund. So we're always interested in what um, funders like you, what are what are the key elements that over a 20 plus year track record, you could say define the best funds and fund managers? That's a great question, Adela. I, I think one of the most relevant things that I've learned like an LP and also being a GP as well is the specialization. We need, you know, someone that is with boots on the ground, that has had a lot of scars and lessons learned, and that it's nevertheless, you know, willing to do that again. You know, what did I get my OA1 visa? Because for the, you know, the cost of government in the U.S. is so challenging to be a venture capitalist. So everyone that has more than 20 years in the industry deserves a quite unique outstanding, you know, recognition for the immigration law. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can understand that specialization, resilience, and specialization is tied not only with sector, it's also tied to a, a particular geography or, you know, particular business models as well. So for us, you know, someone that really understand that that has, you know, partnerships that can add value, diverse profiles, diverse trajectories and backgrounds, and also that it's tied to particular geography, added value for us are the ones that can become the most added value for our founders. Mm. Because at the end, we understood that the real founders peak, you know, who they want to partner with. Mm. It's, it's, and it's so relevant to build their own brand, to really create value, being able to roll up their sleeves and work with those founders. So for the for us, it's not a um, monopoly game. We, we really believe in diversification. And also, I think that level of expertise, that level of diversity in their teams, the investment thesis, and lastly, the sizing of the fund. For us, it's really relevant to understand that in early stages particular, that is where we are focused on, is so relevant to be disciplined in the size because then we have a timing to allocate the money, to create value and get out of there and create all over again mm -hmm. and exit and give return and add value. So for us, that is also really relevant. So we are focused on funds that are around 20 up to 200 million because we do believe that that's a huge gap that no one is paying attention. It's challenging for a larger LP to allocate money there. It's challenging to understand emerging fund managers as well. But we're not afraid to evaluate them because we have been there and we know how much added value they bring to the ecosystem. Yeah, that's very helpful. As as David and I, as co-GPs of, of Analyst Ventures, uh, you know, try to um, fashion 
the fund. One of the things we were very sensitive to is what I was discussing with the Fed president, the dramatic changes in our industry that happened over the last two years. And whereas before raising a hundred million as a first time fund, you know, everybody had money to invest. That was very feasible, but we were faced with a market with a very different dynamic now. Interest rates way up, so if you didn't know what to do, you could get 5% on it, that's not bad. And you're suddenly attracted to stocks and because the, the stock markets just started to do very well as is sometimes bound to happen. Mm -hmm. So what we found is that it, 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 it's, it isn't, the, despite experience record, all of that, it's just the money isn't there at those levels. So I think it's very smart to look for smaller funds because we want to also get it done, get to the exit, Absolutely. get returns for our, and you know, we just can't spend all that time. And for raising. us, it's really relevant to really collaborate in, and create this cross-pollination you know, environment. In venture capital, particularly early stages, that's our, you know, uh, I don't say the mood, the mindset that it would normally, you know, move us. That's our drive. So we want to definitely, you know, allocate that money to really diverse fund managers that I can have access to the most promising founders and really create, you know, the success, the alpha return for our LPs, but also the LPs lose the, you know, they, 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 they can really have the appetite. They understand how these alternative assets industry evolves and really have the stomach to commit long term. So I'm starting to speak with all the different financial intermediaries also to say, hey, why don't you convince your ultra high network individuals to get a little bit of exposure to innovation and what is going to change the future of our <laughs> world for good? So get involved with us, right? <laughs> and you've mentioned a few times that the focus is definitely early mm -hmm. and uh, what we call seed, right? Yes. And, 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 and you've mentioned it. Um, but can you tell the audience why? Because as an investor, you know, you have a choice. You can invest in a, a lot of areas. But why do you pick that? Of course, that's what we selected as well as our strategy. Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, according to the different, and you can take a look at different sources, but the most, you know, promising returns, and I think it's a pretty interesting Cambridge Associates study as well, 73% of the returns are coming from emerging fund managers and funds that are less than 250 million. So what in U.S. we call micro VCs, with, of course, for Latin America, it's not micro, yeah. but yeah, we understand the game. So that's the data. That is why. And, and that is why also it's so relevant to really, you know, convince another diversified source of LPs or potential investors to allocate into investment platform and use we live in the digital economy, 21st century, so we need to use the technology also to add value to our investors. So we always like to see our limited partners, not only like a limited partners, like a partners. So we are creating an ecosystem mapping tool that it works like a you know neurological map. So all the LPs, even independently as serial entrepreneurs, family office, high network individuals, corporation, and ultra high networks, independently of their profile, they are playing one particular role in the ecosystem. So we create a profile and we upload their profile and start to connect, okay, in our you know, fund, in our portfolio, you are already connected with this, you're already exposed to that, and you are focused not only in your you know, vertical, every industry is subject to disruption. So take a look in the different trends that are starting to happen. So connect with these GPs, with these founders, and with all the service providers around. So having a digital tool to really create that 24-7 available for our investors and our stakeholders is one of the things that we do believe that is making quite unique the you know, opportunity and the you know investment firm that we are building right now. Yeah, it sure is. And you know, I think that um one of the opportunities that we offer at Angeles Investors is that same opportunity to connect with our network of almost 400 investors 
who are passionate about helping these striving companies to succeed. And like you, uh, where you have the multiple companies and opportunities, that's also what we aim to do. Leverage this network in a way that, I mean, who has this network? This We're so fortunate to be able to have a, a, a group that shares the mission, Absolutely. the passion, and the commitment. Absolutely. You know, and that's so much of the work. And that's why we are so, you know, happy to be here with you, you know, building this long time relationship. Because we do believe that you are one of the more relevant stakeholders for our network as well. Thank you so, so much. We are really happy and amazed and really, really, really surprised what you are building. And I'm just opening the door to really, you know, create something bigger together. Thank you so much. We 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 hope that will be the case too. And one, I, I, I do want to ask this question because it's pivotal to what you do, what we do. And one of the issues that has been presented by the, uh, you know, the, the rapid speed at which the uh, Fed increase rates is that it's created a real problem in terms of exits. I mean, the IPO market I wouldn't call it dead, but you know it's just barely breathing. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's off of the uh, uh, the respirator, but <laughs> just barely. Liquidity and, sucker. Yeah, <laughs> and then valuations everywhere have been hampered by that. And for all of us, you know, exit is critical. <laughs> so how are you dealing with that? We're starting, so we think this is the best time to actually hit the market because we think the economy is going to improve in two, in three, you know, short enough a period to give us the bounce that's going to make our fund a big success. But how do you think about it from your perspective as an investor? I think we share exactly the same perspective. You know, I have been, I have the privilege for being in the last two decades in this industry. So I've seen the cycles, you know, up and down. So this is the best momentum to invest because when that cycles go a little bit down, definitely it's going to go up. So for us, that's why we are, you know, so happy that we finally are launching at this momentum. It's the, the most challenging environment to fundraise, definitely, but is the best timing to invest. Yeah, absolutely. So and it's frustrating, we, right? It, it is. Because we it is. the opportunities are so great. But we need the funds. Absolutely. <laughs> but that's why these kind of events like you, it's the cross pollination exercise that everyone in this industry needs to do and follow. So more than happy that you are welcome to our annual investment as well. And we are bringing another players to the scene. Thank you. That's what we need to do. And definitely the ones that they have been really, you know, successful in their businesses, but they haven't been exposed to be what is it all about being an angel and be an investor mm -hmm. and become a relevant actor in an ecosystem. Now you are given the platform to give them the visibility. So that's what we can do together. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I would say that similarly, we're excited about going to your annual meeting, but Angeles strives to create uh, forums like this one every quarter where we elevate the thinking of our members uh, to better understand uh, the tremendous changes in the economy, in the capital markets that affect angel investing. And we welcome you as a guest and participant in the coming years as well. And every time, every quarter, keep it you can write your <laughs> calendar. Your calendar. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. So thank you so much. Thanks to you for the invitation. Happy to, you know, stay the rest of the program. Thank you. Well, and can we give a big hand? <laughs>